Patients who have suffered a mild to moderate stroke will be getting more help to reintegrate into the community. Up to 2,000 patients and their caregivers will benefit from a new program by the National Neuroscience Institute that's rolling out next year. It will provide them with training and self-care tips. The Tomasic Foundation is putting in some $1.4 million to fund it for three years. The real challenge begins post-discharge from the hospital as they continue to have their rehabilitation in their community. Up to 60% of stroke survivors can face long-term disabilities that affect walking, talking, swallowing, cognitive function. The post-discharge program includes caregiver training that will meet their specific needs. Stroke survivors will go through a four-module empowerment course to build their confidence. The program will be introduced at the Singapore General Hospital and Tan Tok Seng Hospital. So it's going to focus on um, helping them to control their risk factors and reduce the risk of subsequent strokes happening, uh, as well as subsequent hospitalizations. But also help them to navigate the sometimes rather complex um, uh, community that we have, many different resources, and one can get quite confused if you're not familiar with it. And Associate Professor Deidre Anne De Silva is here in the studio with us. She is Senior Consultant of Neurology at the National Neuroscience Institute and also the Tomasic Foundation RISE Program Lead. And also joining us is Rima Bhatti, a stroke survivor. A warm welcome to the both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor De Silva, for a start, uh, how prevalent are stroke cases in Singapore? And are there certain groups of people that are more susceptible here in Singapore? So there are about 9,000 over new cases of stroke every year in Singapore. Uh, and with the growing po uh, aging population, we'll anticipate that this will continue to grow. Mm. There are many risk factors for stroke, one of which is as we grow older, you become more susceptible to stroke. But it's important to note that one in five people will get a stroke under the age of 60. Um, and it is something that can affect anyone at any age. There are certain conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes and high cholesterol that puts one at a higher risk of mm. stroke. And certain lifestyle um, measures um, could help you to reduce your risk of stroke, such as to stop smoking, to exercise regularly, healthy diet and such. I think it's also important to note that it is among the top 10 causes of hospitalization here in Singapore. That's right. Uh, Rima, you've encountered an episode yourself. What was the experience like and what were some of the challenges that you faced during the recovery? Okay, the first, uh, the first challenge was like my, when I discharged from my hospital, mm -hmm. the first challenge was like my balance and my, um, like I, I, was, I was almost like thinking that I cannot balance properly while walking towards, but I felt that I'm turning to my right side more on while I'm, so that, that makes me like, and my speech as well, because it was, it was a bit slur. After the discharge also, I felt a little bit, so that makes me like uh, conscious a bit. So uh, usually, uh, so what I did was like for about two months of time, I was really scared to take the public transport to walk to the bus stop. So I took taxi to go to work and come back. And then uh, while speaking also, I, I was like a bit um, like not, not very comfortable to talk in front of people that I thought that maybe uh, the people don't understand. So I, I kept asking my daughter and my colleagues, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you? And they kept saying, yeah, yeah, we do understand what you're saying. Mm. So yeah, that makes me like, okay, I'm, I'm normal, I'm okay. <laughs> those moments that you faced, apart from those moments, what were some of the things that you remember were so crucial during your recovery? And, and do you also have to make some really important adjustments to your lifestyle? Um, oh yes, definitely. Uh, the critical part, I must say that my, the support, the biggest support of my family mm. and my colleagues at work, that was really, the, they really played a very big part in my, in my recovery because I really get a very big uh, support and help from my workplace, my kindergarten, Alistair Kama kindergarten. And my, uh, all the colleagues, especially my principal, Madam Shawana, my colleagues, um, teacher Rose, Musliati, Lezawati, uh, Siti, they all were like very supportive so to me. So the support and they, yes, was really yes. important. And they all like, it's not only they were supporting, they were like, you know, 
uh, even if I'm in my class, they keep coming and checking on me. Are you okay? You need any help? <laughs> yes, I'm okay. I'm fine. <laughs> what about your lifestyle? Do you have to make any adjustments? Oh, definitely, yes. My lifestyle was like uh, I made uh, so much changes in my diet mm. and my medication. Uh, I can say that I was not very regular in taking my medication. And my diet was, um, I don't know why I did that, but I was like taking so much of sugary drinks and all that. And I cut down all immediately because uh, this, this episode really scared me a lot. So, so I cut down. Maintaining yeah. a healthy lifestyle and Allah, a good yes, diet yes, is yes, really yes. important here. I stopped here. everything which trigger my yeah, sugar. We're glad to know that you're doing much better now, Rima. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor De Silva, on the other hand, though, up to 60% of survivors, they suffer long-term disabilities. Uh, what is currently being done here in Singapore to manage their recovery? And how does the pilot program come in? to support the survivors? So the healthcare system has various programs which are already in place, uh, such as rehabilitation uh, to help people with physical disability, speech difficulty that Rima face with speech therapy and such. Mm. Uh, but there are other consequences uh, that a stroke survivor has to deal with. Some are psychological, adjusting to life after stroke, mental health issues and such. So the pilot program will help us um, to empower patients um, so that they are able to anticipate these issues when they occur, that they can get to the right places to get help. They can be empowered with the knowledge um, and also um, to help us to help the caregivers of stroke survivors who are the ones who are very critical in looking after them, mm. but they also are under stress themselves. So this program will address both the survivors as well as the caregivers. Yeah, so, so it's not just the survivors and the patients. It's, uh, support will be given to the caregivers exactly, yeah. too. In what form will they take uh, in for these survivors? <clears throat> so, Sorry, for these caregivers. So the caregivers are off, uh, already trained with how to look after the physical needs, uh, mm. whether it's transfers, day-to-day -day care and such. But there are other needs that they need to address uh, if a stroke survivor is dealing with anxiety, for example, how do they handle that? Mm. Adjustment to life after stroke is something that roles and responsibilities change and such. So we want to be able to help the, the caregivers to know how to deal with it and help their family members and loved ones. At the same time, look after their own self mm. for self-care so that they don't burn out because we see that very commonly with caregivers. So we want to make sure that they can do the best that they can for their loved one at the same time looking after themselves. Based on your experience, Rima, what do you think the pilot program should include to support survivors and their caregivers? Oh, well, in the way I can say that I'm very, very fortunate and blessed to have a very supportive uh, system with me, my family and my... But there are people here which don't have the strong family support and all. So I think, yes, the, the this program can definitely help them mm -hmm. to keep checking on them, whether they are taking their medicines uh, regularly and they are going for their therapies and all the taking care of, like, you know, everything is being taken care of. But, so it's like a keeping eye on them. Yeah, that really supports them, yeah. So we've been talking about uh, the post-stroke recovery support, but beyond that, uh, Professor De Silva, how, how can people prevent getting a stroke? So it, for stroke survivors, they are at a higher risk for another stroke happening or a heart attack and other um, issues with vascular disease. Mm. Uh, we do know that many people, even after having a stroke, are not as good as Rima, and some people don't take their medicines regularly. So we know that about 45% of our stroke survivors are, are not compliant with their medication. Mm. So through this pilot program as well, we want to emphasize the importance of taking your medication, having regular follow-ups, getting your risk factors under control, taking care of those lifestyle issues like diet, as Rima has pointed out, making sure that people don't smoke. And I think, um, you know, these things definitely will reduce the risk of a recurrent stroke. So in addition to dealing with the consequences of stroke, it's also preventing another one from occurring that's very important. Mm. And I think it's also important to understand the different types of strokes that are out there and to be able to identify them. So prevention is always better than an ounce of cure. Uh, Professor De Silva, Rima, thank you very much for joining us tonight in the studio. That was Associate Professor Deidre Anne De Silva from the National Neuroscience Institute and stroke survivor Rima Basi.